So each time you see Jesus Christ does anything, it's just a measure of the grace and the picture of that grace. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. People of God, let's quickly jump down to the book of Titus chapter 2. And maybe I may be rounding off here. Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. You can't talk about salvation without talking about grace. Because the salvation we receive, it is not by merit. The salvation we receive is not by qualification. The salvation we receive is not by the activity we have engaged ourselves in. The salvation we receive is not by the services we are rendering in the church. The salvation we receive is by grace. It's by grace. It could have been another person entirely that was saved, but God saved you. It's by grace. The salvation we have is by grace. And the Bible says in that scripture that the grace of God that brings salvation. So when the grace of God is coming to somebody, is coming with salvation. If that person embraces grace, embraces salvation. And that salvation is in Christ Jesus Christ. And when it enters the person, please follow me to verse 12. When, this, when the grace of God enters an individual, after you have read this very well and understand you will not argue again the bible says this grace will teach us some things one teaching us that denying ungodliness that's number one so when the grace of god enters you it will teach you these three levels it will teach you these three levels that you must understand number one it will teach you to deny ungodliness two it will teach you to deny worldly laws and three we should live so badly righteously and godly in this present world. Did you hear what I've just read? Thank God that this scripture was not written by modern preachers of today. They would have deleted it or they would have edited it. Hallelujah. Listen, these are the preachers today that have closed their eyes away from the ungodly practices of the people. But yet, the Bible says that the grace of God will teach us to do what? To deny ungodliness. Number two, it will teach us to deny worldly lust. Number three, it will teach us to, deny, to, to be sober. It will teach us to be sober. Let's come to the first one. It will teach us to deny ungodliness. Listen to me. That will permit me. I cannot express it all or explain to everybody what ungodliness is. There are so many ungodly practices in the church today. So many ungodly practices in the world, everywhere. I hear people who claim they go to church on a Sunday and nobody tells them this. No wonder the Bible says that judgment will start from where? The house of God. They come to church on a Sunday morning like, like this. And nobody tells them that the life of sin attracts judgment. Nobody tells them that it's appointed unto man wants to die. And after this, the judgment. Nobody's talking about that anymore. In our modern times, preachers will have removed that from the scripture. Because they themselves are practicing ungodliness. Any kind of ungodliness you want to think about. Sin of immorality is ungodliness. And that is what is predominant now in the world of youth. Immoral practices. Our young teenagers, little girls, they will get onto TikTok. They will make a video, expose their nakedness. They will go on to uh, YouTube. They will get all these kind of social media platforms, Snapchat. They will do all kinds of pictures to expose their body in order for them to make money. Now our young girls have realized that they are no longer human beings, that they are commodities for sale. So they sell their bodies. They sell everything that has to do with their person. Preachers are not preaching about that anymore. See what is happening. 
You see, you will almost want to accept and appreciate the other religion because to a very large extent, they are still decent in their understanding about serving God. You see them in their look, they are decent. This today is Sunday. Get to some places of worship today and you will see unseeable. What you shouldn't see with your eyes. Hallelujah. That's what you see today. You see people, you'll be wondering, this one, where are they going to? It is on a Sunday morning like this, they want to display the best cloth that they have just bought. And this best cloth they have just bought, ladies, will expose everything about them. The cleavage of their chest, open their back, open their buttocks, open everywhere. Wear the shortest form, call it mini or micro mini or nano micro mini skirt. The one that is so short like anything, that's what they are wearing and going to church. And preachers are preaching. I wonder what we are preaching. Some of them will even come and sit down in front of the pastor. And then they open the video free of charge. It's also grace because it is free. The preacher, you don't merit it, but you'll be seeing it. It is the world of today. And then you now begin to ask yourself the question, could this be why Jesus Christ came to the earth? Could it be why he came from heaven? We sing it as a song. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay. My debt to pay. Has he actually paid that debt? If he has paid that debt, lady, you will not expose your body. If he has paid that debt, because the Bible says our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which Jesus Christ purchased with his own blood. So if he has paid that debt, you won't look the way that you are looking. You are now competing with the world. Come to church on Sunday, it is competition. You are competing with the world. You want to look like they look. You want to dress like they dress. The Bible says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness, number one. Number two, worldly lust. When you are competing with the world, when you are acting like the world, you are conducting your marriage the way they conduct theirs. All right? It is on the day of wedding in Christian fold, in Christian assemblies. That is where you see the lady once upon a time while she was still in the choir singing before that wedding day because she will still return back to the same place. While she was still singing in the choir, while she was still an usher, you never saw all those things. But on the day of wedding, you now see Orish, Orish. The moment she's coming from the outside like this, you'll be wondering, a masquerade in white uniform. Because the whole look on her face, and some of them, the worst of it all, the worst of it all, they will now, the wedding garment will show everything. Because on the day of their wedding, it's the invitation to friends and family members and where we shall say come you guys have not seen my nakedness before come on. today is the day of my nakedness you know you have day for everything you have valentine day you have christmas day you have that lady that's the day of nakedness and then you now look at all the people she surround herself with all the people they call them convertees you will now see all of them you would think that they just went to import them from the marine kingdom the way they were here and you you can't talk to them because you tell that grace has covered it all is that the meaning of grace no sir grace will teach us to deny ungodliness and worldly lost that's what grace will teach us and then number three it will teach us to be sober where is the sobriety in Christianity? And we are talking about grace. Ladies, I know you want to belong to the world of fashion. It's the generation that we have found ourselves. Who says you are not beautiful the way you are? Naturally, God has made you well. Didn't you read in the book of Genesis chapter 1 that every creature he made, he saw that they were good. You are good alone the way you are. You are good enough the way you are. But when you now decide 
you fix this one you fix that one you fix this one you fix they will fix eyes they have the third and the fourth eye two eyes that God has given to them is not enough they choke and choke so that when you look at the eye of that lady you think you are seeing the pussycat so they are telling God God I don't know why you didn't give me the eyes of a pussycat you should have given me pussycat eyes that is abuse of God's mentality if God meant you to have that, he will have put it for you, sir. Madam, he will have put it there for you. But you see, because that's what Satan is doing now, he has entered everywhere. This preaching is not common again. I pray for you, you will not miss the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me quickly give out the scripture. Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to verse 32. The book of Luke chapter 15, Please write it down, and you may read it later. Then also write down Luke chapter 18, verse 9 to verse 14. 